News has brought you the latest developments direct from the capitals of the world. You have just heard from Stanley Johnson in London, Victor Rankin in Cairo, and Bradley Barr in Rome. In conclusion, we now bring you Bill Roberts in Berlin. Come in, Berlin. Come in, Berlin. Hello, everybody. This is Bill Roberts in Berlin. On this bleak Thanksgiving day, it seems good to be broadcasting to an America which is still at peace with the world. But while you over there are enjoying your turkey dinner, the news for the democracies is still ominous. The Ministry of Propaganda has just announced that 14 million tons of Allied shipping have been sunk since the start of the war. And tonight there is further good news for the Germans. And that is that this great city lies in utter and tranquil calm, marking the 26th consecutive day without any sign of enemy planes. Say nothing, but continue to talk. That's what I've been saying, night after night, nothing. Nor are any planes expected. But at this moment, all Germany is humming with activity. The excitement grows momentarily. On the Eastern Front, we have sensational news as Field Marshal Walter von Brauchitsch, Commander-in-Chief of the entire German Army, reports his forces have the Russian bear by the tail. And blitz formations are scoring bang-up victories on three sectors against Leningrad, the Crimea, and at the very gates of Moscow. In Berchtesgaden, there was a frenzy of excitement as Reichsfuhrer Adolf Hitler, determined to fire his soldiers on to still greater feats of valor, announced he himself would leave shortly for the snow-covered battlefields. And that, we believe, is news in anybody's language. Well, that's all the news from here. This is Bill Roberts saying good night from Berlin and returning you now to New York. You got anything, Red? Yeah, why? Brother, don't ask. But this broadcast sounded innocent enough. Did it? Look, he started out by saying on the Eastern Front he had sensational news. That was a tip-off to me that something was coming. Then he used the word tale. T-A-L-E. The story. In other words, a lie. Next, bang up victories. Bang up, that's a code word. Germans are getting smashed up. The Russian tide's turning. Then he said, Hitler's leaving for the front to fire his soldiers on. Fire. Get it? Why should Schickelgruber go to the front if his troops are winning? Well, but uh, it's impossible he's getting information out. We went over his script with a fine tooth comb. It was most innocent. And how do you account for this? It has reached America that General von Brauchitsch has been relieved of the high command. How can such news leak out when we in Germany do not even know it? But maybe it is false news. Yes, perhaps it is not true. But it is true. It could be. The report did not come from Anne Roberts. The news appeared in one paper only, the New York Chronicle. It is like every other piece of information that has leaked out of Berlin in the past seven weeks. It always appears in the Chronicle. Is there any other correspondent attached to the Chronicle? No. I do not understand how he does it. No one asks you to understand. No one expects you to understand. You are stupid swine. You are being relieved of your broadcasting activities at once. Yes, sir. Oh. You'll put on uniforms and go to the front. The Russian front. Yes, yes sir. Hi, Hitler. 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 Takes every possible precaution to prevent the leakage of information and then a pair of stupid oxen. Oh, come now, Carl. Don't let this upset you so. What do you expect me to do? Recommend them for the Iron Cross? They are going to the front. Isn't that enough? If I could, I would have them shot. You're sending them against the Russians. It's the same thing. Send in Herrn Weiner. I'm very sorry, Herr Colonel. Oh, you're sorry. How many years have you been a detective, Herr Weiner? All my life. It's incredible. You were assigned to follow Herrn Roberts with implicit instructions not to let him out of your sight. This morning, the police found you handcuffed to a lamppost. How do you account for it? I will read my report. Uh, after the 
broadcast subject embarked to the street. Subject? Yeah, Herr Roberts. I'll continue. There was an air raid. It is forbidden to be on the street during such a time. Herr Himmler himself decreed it. But it was my duty to follow. I proceeded behind subject for two blocks. Did the subject see you? The streets were empty. Did he see you? I think he did. You think he did? Go on. At the corner of Bismarckstrasse, subject encountered an air raid warden. I observed him talking to him for some minutes. You know the rest, Havana. Pretending to be the citizen official, Roberts instructed the air raid warden to arrest you for being on the street in violation of blackout orders. Yeah, I, I tried to explain I was a detective. But there was so much noise, so much confusion. So very much confusion that the warden mistook you for a dangerous criminal and lashed you to a lamppost with your own handcuffs. Yeah, meanwhile the subject was gone. Get out! Wait. Continue to follow him, Roberts. But if I hear of such idiocy again, I warn you it will not be pleasant. Heil Hitler! Why is it that in all Berlin we cannot find a detective with intelligence? This American seems to be a very clever man. Clever enough to make a fool out of every agent who has followed him, yes. Something always happens. There was Hüfner, invariably successful in the past. On a rainy day he followed the wrong umbrella for ten miles. Then Traube, a very good man, but not good enough to find a traitor who has been furnishing her Roberts with his information. There must be some way. Oh, excuse me. You changed mine here. Keep it. Danke schön. This is familiar, sir. I bought some Russian stamps from you the other day. I like them very much. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, let me see. Uh, you wanted me also to locate the magenta 2 ruble 1898, did you not? That's right. Did you get it? Uh, no, but I think I may have it later in the day. Could you call back this evening? Yes, of course. Good. Uh, shall we say 7 o'clock? I'll be here. For a minute there, I thought I'd lost you. Come on, let's go. Sorry, I must misplace my ration card. I'll bring it back later this afternoon. You cannot leave until I have your card. But I tell you, I must have forgotten it. Fraulein, I do not make the laws. I shall call the manager. And do not try to leave. Think you'll get away with it? But it's true. Thought I had my card. I was sure I had it. Will you come with me, please? Oh, but I will late for work if you keep me. I promise to return with my card later. Some of you people do not realize that we are at war. You wish to stuff yourselves at the expense of others. Well, Fräulein, this time you have failed. Come. Just a minute. Take her lunch out of my card. Sir, I must warn you, this woman is taking advantage of you. I am not. Really, I thought I had my card. Everything's going to be all right. Go ahead, Blitzkrieg. Very well. It's this sort of spirit which may cost Germany the war. Oh, do you really think so? 
What did you say? I said, do you really think so? Come on, let's get out of this joint. Thank you again. Goodbye. I walk with you. As far as your office, I mean. Oh, well, it's passed on to the Linden. Then we'll take a taxi. Taxi? Oh, really, I'm being a nuisance. <laughs> That's not what I call it. Where do we go? I work at the Deutsche Bank in Maustrasse. Just a minute. Next stop, Deutsche Bank. So far, so good. In fact, you have done very well. I congratulate you. You are the first person I have tried that he does not suspect. Thank you, Carl. However, he may check with the bank. Are you sure all arrangements have been made? Well, I told them if anyone asks for me, they should say I'm employed there as a clerk. You must keep in mind that you are to be very careful. Why are you frowning? Carl, I've never done this sort of work before. Oh, I have complete confidence in you, my dear. I don't mean that. I mean spying on people. Somehow I don't like it. Believe me, I don't enjoy using you for this type of work. But it is necessary. I suppose you're right. Although I am a Nazi, I was born a Prussian Junker. And women of my family do not play the spy. I'm not a member of your family yet, Carl. But soon, I hope. When do you see him again? Dining with him tonight. But you are dining with me. I was counting on it. Which is more important? Your work, naturally. What is it? Your mail, sir. I'll be the same, Carl. Uh, where are you going now? I must make myself attractive for my American, no? Very well. Report to me later. So she's your new agent. Don't you approve? Why not? She should enjoy her work. Her Roberts has charm. Frau Hahn is not interested in charm. Carl, do you remember Willie Brackner's orchestra? Of course. What about him? He's opening at the Spring Garden tonight. You used to enjoy his music so much. I thought we might go tonight together. I'm sorry I'll be working late. Oh. But um, perhaps tomorrow night. Provided, of course, that Fräulein Howen is not available. Good evening. Good evening. I've been waiting for you. Did you get it? The Russian stamp? Yes. I think you will find it extremely interesting. How much is it? I shall have to ask 200 marks. Are you sure it's genuine? Absolutely. The person from whom I got it can be trusted, I assure you. Good. You wouldn't have any Italian-African issues by any chance? Nothing particularly rare. Perhaps the next week, on Friday. You see, I'm here only occasionally, Herr Gruber, and one or two days a week permits me to trade a few stamps in this establishment. I see. I'll be back on Friday. Twenty-seven Brookstrasse. Don't tell me you're a collector. Oh, yes, I collect stamps and... And blunts? Wait till you taste the dinner I'm cooking for us. You're cooking? You mean in your apartment? Of course. I can flip a frying pan and shell a pea with the best of them. I have a no recipe I want to try out on you. I hope it's successful. You might have told me. Oh, didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. Oh, how careless of me. My dear Karen, will you do me the honor of dining with me at home? My dear Bill, I should be delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Here you are, Robert's hash house. Uh, I promise you won't have any trouble with your ration card here. Oh. Close your eyes. What do you smell? Mm, 
something good. What is it? My etchings. What? <laughs> In this case, sauce for the spaghetti. Oh. It takes four hours if you want it good. You know, being an American does have its advantages. Well, believe it or not, that same thought has occurred to me once or twice. Now, if you work for a German paper, you'd be living in an attic. I wouldn't be smelling that. I'd better get to that right away. Mm. You make yourself at home, will you? Thank you. discovered your secret. What secret? How you managed to keep such a wonderful tan in the middle of winter. Oh, well, you'd be surprised at all the things that gadget will do. <sighs> Is that also a secret from your Italian prince? No, I got this from another Italian. Lucretia Borgia. Oh. Well, there you are. Here's to our future. No. I know better toast. Okay, you name it then. We don't know what the future holds. Let's drink to the present. Now you're talking. To you, me, the present. I'm an honest man. I know nothing. But you recognize this man? No, no, I swear I do not. I... I know him. I saw him here last night. You remember, Hans? He was interested in Italian-African issues. Yeah. Now I remember him. He... he came in about six o'clock. No, Hans, it was almost seven. I remember well. Silence! So... You admit doing business with this man. Bring him along. No, no, Colonel. It was not I who sold him the stamps, but one of my customers. That is so. It was old Howen. You fool. Did you say Howen? Yes. But Herr Howen is an honest man. I've known him for 20 years. No, Hans. He first came in here 12 years ago. Or was it 15? Take that idiot out of here. Now be very careful what you say. What is this man Howen's first name? Why, Rudolph Hound, of course. He lives on the other side. I know where he lives. I... I hope I have not got my old friend Rudolph in trouble. Oh, no. Not at all. All right, let him go. You are still at home? Yes, Carl didn't want me at the office. You mean that? Oh, no, no, I haven't lost my job. What's the matter, Papa? Is anything wrong? No. You don't look well. well I'm feeling all right. You say that Colonel Van Rauch no longer wants you at the office? 
Come, sit down. Mm -hmm. You're out of breath. How many times have I told you not to climb those stairs so fast? I really believe you thought I'd been discharged. I didn't know what to think. I have a new job. I was going to tell you this morning, but you were still asleep when I left. Oh, I see. You are no longer working for the Gestapo. I'm very glad. Well, yes, I'm working for the Gestapo only. Papa, did you ever agree to do something that you hated? Nothing dishonest, but... I mean, something that under ordinary circumstances you wouldn't even consider doing it. Because it's your duty, you... Hey, Karen, what are you trying to tell me? Doing police work. It's true. I was assigned to follow a young American. An American? He was sending information out of the country. Things only the Gestapo knew, and Carl wanted me to find out how he did it. And uh, did you succeed? Yes. He's getting his information from Hans Gruper. You know him, you've been to his shop. You? You reported that the young man went to Gruber's shop? Yeah, Gruber's a traitor. He should be punished. Hans Gruber is innocent. I know he is. You know? Yes. He has absolutely no way of obtaining Gestapo information. Then who else in the shop would have? No one. But me. Papa, what are you saying? You have always told me everything. All the news, you trusted me. Papa! At first I thought you had deliberately, but you had. You didn't know. You're telling me? Yes. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Because I'm against all that. Oh, you old people, with your old ideas and all the world. They have arrested Mr. Roberts. On my way home, I thought of trying to get away. I was desperate and frightened. I thought of a thousand avenues of escape. But there's no sense in that. They would only harm you. And in the end, they would have me also. We in Germany are imprisoned by our government. There is no escape. What is it, Papa? What do you see? Quick, Papa, you must go. Quickly, I can't see them take you. Oh, Papa, I don't care what you've done. I love you. Karen, it, it is the end for us. Karen, my kids. Papa, please go. They would have me in ten minutes. And they would arrest you for helping me. I've got you in trouble. No, no. You must do one thing for me. You must turn me over to the police. No. You must. That's the only way. There's no hope for me. You are my life now. My own daughter. I cannot believe. You will turn me over to them. Shamefully. What is Germany coming to? Take him out. Wait a minute. If you think I'm going to appear against that man, you're crazy. I never saw him before in my life. Do you dare deny you bought this stamp from him? The message is in Herrn Hound's own handwriting. What I have to say, I'll say in court, at the trial. Court? Trial? My dear man, this is Germany. I understand how you feel, Fräulein Hauen. It always seems very hard. But you have done your duty to country and Führer. We heard outside the door. You are very brave. Please. I'll see you later in my office. I warn you, that man is innocent. I intend to help him. You will do nothing. Fortunately, I think I have prevented you from getting any further information out of Germany. And that is my only interest in you. There is no longer any need to keep you under arrest. Good day, Herr Roberts. Fräulein Karen, you know, I'm going to remember you. Everything is beautiful. Berlin, November 41. A very blonde girl. I remember she drank my wine on Friday night and the next day turned her own father over to the Gestapo. Heil Hitler.
Perhaps you will tell us now, Herr Hauen. Who else worked with you? No one. I tell you, no one. I think he wants some more. Seen him? Is he all right? Yes. I have just talked to one of the policemen. He is getting the best of care. The very best. Oh, thank God. Believe me, I would not let anything happen to him. Any more than that which must be done. What do you mean? Surely you understand, Karen. You yourself turned him over. Not to be... Carl, he's an old man. You know how the old ones are, they don't understand. Carl, you say you love me. Well, you must help him for me. I intend to. If he were brought before the people's court, you know what it would be. The executioner's axe. There would be infamous scandal involving you, perhaps even me. After all, it was from you he got this information. Yes, I know. So I have arranged things which are much better. As a favor to you, my dear. There will be no scandal, no fuss. When the police are through questioning him, he will be sent to the Gründorf Asylum for the Mentally Ill. Gründorf Asylum? I myself have arranged for the Certificate of Insanity. Oh, I've heard of the Gründorf Asylum. And he'll be murdered there. People who are sick, crippled, or puny. They're sent there and they never come back. He will be well taken care of, I promise you. Oh, Gründorf, Carl, no. My dear, you must control yourself. And remember that I'm doing everything possible to make the best of a bad situation. Good day, sir. Good day. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, sir, not at all. Foreign Hound was just leaving. I will see you later. I'm sorry, sir. Did I hear you call her Howen? Yes, sir. She has been of great help to us in the Roberts affair. So, there is the young woman. She's to be congratulated. And the same applies to you too, Colonel. Thank you, sir. Stopping that leak was splendid. Keep up the good work, and who knows? There may be a surprise in store for you. You're very kind to say so, sir. Not at all. Uh, what I wanted to see you about was the latest report from our friends in Hungary. Oh, yes, I have the figures on my desk. Your script has the complete approval of the chief censor. Perhaps I should mention that fact over the air. You go on in exactly five minutes, sir. Herr Abt, I must speak to you. All right, go ahead. Oh, please, not here. It's about my father. Well, what about him? Well, do you know what's happening to him? Let's go on there. We've got to do something, Herr Robert. After all, you're responsible and it's only... I'm responsible. You turned him in, didn't you? No, I didn't. You must help. They're going to kill him. What? I've done everything I could. They won't listen to me. You're a great bunch, you Nazis. You started out to get the goods on me, so Adolf would kiss you on both cheeks for being a smart girl. Then you scream murder when you find you've trapped your own father. You mean you won't help? I didn't say that. I wanted to help, because I like your father. But I've already been to the ambassador. He can't do a thing. They've got him in the Grindorf Asylum. If you don't do something... Well, what do you expect me to do? One minute, Herr Roberts. But you can't just leave him to die. Listen, sister, I'm just an American newspaper guy. If I were one of your German supermen, it might be different. But as it is... I wish you were in his place. Maybe I will be, later. Right now, I've got to go on the air. Hello, America. This is your Berlin correspondent. Bill Roberts. Tonight, the people of Germany are as happy as larks and as busy as bees. But I tell you, I'm not sick, and I'm not insane. You have that pressure on the brain, and we intend to operate. But first, we must have your written permission, Amberla. To absolve you of murder, I never sign. Never! You hear? Yes? Uh, yes? Who? Surgeon Colonel von Breckstein? I never heard of him. Very well, send them in. Here, bring this back to me with this fool's signature and then proceed with the operation. Yes, sir. No. I will not be operated on. Quiet. 
Sergeant Colonel von Brickstein. Sergeant Colonel von Brickstein? I don't believe I ever... Heil Hitler. Hitler. Of course, to be sure. Heil Hitler. Will you please sit down? Thank you. This will explain my visit. This will serve to introduce Sergeant Colonel von Brickstein, Chief Psychiatrist of the Third Army Corps. He is making a tour of inspection of your institution. Aren't you the Dr. Dietrich who addressed the 1939 Nuremberg Congress? You heard my speech? Every word. It was brilliant. One might even say colossal. Oh, come now, it was nothing. <laughs> That's what Dr. Neuhauser said. <laughs> he did, eh? Oh, but you know Dr. Neuhauser, he's a fool. Yeah, yeah, he is a fool. Well, Doctor, what can we do for you? I'm interested in your methods of Gnadentod. Mercy killings, eh? Exactly. I wonder if we could be alone. Certainly. And I, man, you may go. It is not publicly known, but my report will be made to De Fuhrer himself. I see. You are a friend of our Fuhrer. I'm on his personal staff. Oh. <laughs> I did not know that our Fuhrer has need of a psychiatrist. <laughs> that is, I, I mean, I, I did not mean to. I hope not. I'm a doctor of medicine as well as psychiatry. Naturally, naturally. My time is limited, Doctor. If it's all right with you, I'll commence my tour. Of course. This way. Please. All of our patients are certified insane. Few of them actually are. That is, in the original sense of the word. Now that we have been given a free hand, the unfit are rapidly disappearing. Soon, Germany will be 100% sane. The new Germany has no room for her kind. Sentimentalists might debate the point, but we scientists must be practical. Sometimes we get a political case where a man, instead of being sent to a concentration camp, is quietly disposed of here. The authorities wanted certain information from that one, but he wouldn't talk. Who questioned him? The Gestapo. And they failed. Strange as it seems, they did. So he will take his secret with him when he dies tomorrow. Ach, the Gestapo are crude. As a psychiatrist, I could make the man talk. You really think you could? I know it. Too bad the Gestapo didn't have the use of your services on the case. Oh, well, Herr Doctor, I have an idea. Suppose I compel this man to reveal his secret. You shall have the credit. I the credit? Yes, think of it. They'll say Dietrich succeeded where the Gestapo failed. <laughs> it would be a very interesting experiment. Very interesting. You think so? Mm -hmm. Very well. Give me 30 minutes with it. Yes, yes, certainly. Uh, Kellerman, open the cell. Uh, Herr Doctor, your patients are all disarmed. Oh, yes, don't be afraid. Everything is taken away from them, even their belts. <laughs> Colonel, I wish you the best of luck. When you are finished, I will be in my office. Very well. Herr Doctor, yeah. something terrible has happened. What is it? Come with me. What is it? Come. Let me out of here. What's going on Such here? Such stupidity. What happened? Such imbecility. Oh, well, let's get this quickly. face to the German rash. Hurry up, you fool. Hurry up. You stupid swine. You told me the patients were not armed. The man had a lead pipe. He was a lunatic! But I don't understand. Where is he? Where is he? He's gone. He took my clothes and my glasses and walked by the very nose of your guard. What? I, I, I thought it was the Colonel Doctor. You're stupid, stupid! Look at me! Take off your pants. Me? Take off your trousers! Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Fuhrer will hear about this. Really? Such an outrage I have no more. Colonel von Brixen, I'm sorry. We will catch the man. Uh -huh. Yes? Oh. Well? What is it? Your car is gone. The patient drove it out through the gate. The guard thought... The guard thought you thought? The man has been gone for over an hour. Such a disgrace! This is the end for you, Dietrich. Colonel von Brechstein, I beg you... You beg me! But such a report might be embarrassing for you also. No? To say that you were left without your trousers. You see how it would sound. You and I both would be the laughing stock of all Germany. You may be right. We cannot let such information out. You and me. No. No, 
No, we can't. Mm -hmm. Report to the Gestapo that Herr Howen is dead. Yeah, that's it. Say that, say that he committed suicide in his cell. Uh -huh. Make it official, go through with a burial. Yeah, I will get the coffin and... But we have no corpse. No corpse? Kill somebody. Oh, no. We cannot do that. That wouldn't be legal. No. No. I have it. We will put the sack of potatoes in the coffin. Very good, Dr. Dietrich. <laughs> Very good indeed. <laughs> Order a car. I must get back to Berlin. Yes, Dr. yes, of course. Heil Hitler, bring my car to the entrance. Heil Hitler, Herr Doctor. Heil Hitler, Colonel von Brechstein. Hello? Karen? Yeah? I'm very sorry to have to tell you this, but uh, Dr. Dietrich of the Grundhof Asylum has just telephoned me. Carl, what is it? Your father is dead. Carl, no, no. Terribly sorry. He committed suicide in his cell at one o'clock this morning. Karen? Yes? Perhaps after all it is for the best. You must accept this blow with true German fortitude. Yes, yes, of course. Papa! Papa, Carl! Help me! My How little did you one. Do it? Everything now. Everything is all right. I'm afraid we haven't got much time. I just brought him by for a moment because he had to see you. I wanted to say goodbye. Why were you going? He will tell you everything later. The Zurich Express leaves in 23 minutes. Switzerland, you're going to cross the border. How can he do it? He has arranged it. Your father's going to use my passport. It's been altered by a friend of mine who specializes in such things. You see, your father's been officially reported dead. No one will be looking for me. Of course. What will you do? Say I lost it, get the American embassy to get me another one. We better be going. Goodbye. Bye, Papa. I get in touch with you yes. somehow. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mein liebes Kind. Godspeed. Bill. Yes? I don't know how to tell you, but I'm very grateful. Forget it. persons who left German in the last 24 hours. Well? Among the passengers entering in Switzerland yesterday is the name of William Roberts, listed as an American journalist. Well, that's impossible. Precisely. Herr Roberts is still in Berlin. Are you sure? Quite. Must be an error. I hardly think so. Captain, the chief of customs at the Swiss border. Do you have a report on Roberts? He made his usual broadcast last night and then took Fräulein Hauen to supper at Café Weber. Karen? That's right. I questioned her about it, but she said she was still assigned to keep check on him. At least she said you had not taken her off her job. She a fool? Her job is finished. Perhaps Fräulein Hauen is beginning to enjoy her work. Hello? This is Colonel von Rauen, Berlin. I want some information on William Roberts, American, who was a passenger yesterday in the Zurich Express. Yes, I'll wait. Have you noticed that although Fräulein Howen's father died only the night before last, she seems very cheerful? It may not mean anything. One cannot grieve forever. Send in Fräulein Howen with the final William Roberts. Hello? Yes? He did. I see. How old was he? Sixty-one. Do you have the number of his passport? Give it to me. 772-341. Thank you. What? He's already in Switzerland, isn't he? 
So what can we do? If there's anything wrong, you shall hear from me. Heil Hitler! It's incredible how, how such things can happen. Come in. Never mind, just be so kind as to read me the number of Herrn Robert's passport. Seven hundred seventy-two thousand. Three hundred and forty-one. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, tell me, Karen, Herr Roberts is still in Berlin, is he not? I, uh, yes, I think so. Let's see. One more question. How old was your father? Sixty-one. Thank you. That will be all for the present. Get in touch with the Grundorf Asylum immediately. I want all the details on Hauen's burial. They will, sir. Tell them to get an exhumation order. Anything else? Yes, one thing more. I will be ready to see Mr. Roberts at four this afternoon. Have him brought in at that time. Very good. You picked the darndest places. I thought I knew Berlin, but this is something new. At least we'll be safe here. Now, what's on your mind? Colonel von Raum knows about Father. Has he been caught? I don't know. If they found out about the passport, they know it's yours. Uh-oh. Now huh, comes a blitzkrieg. But what about you? I'm not sure. I think he suspects that I had something to do with the escape. Oh, that guy would turn you in like that if he thought you even knew about it. I don't know what to do. I do. I'll take the rap. No. No, I'm not going to get you into trouble. Trouble? For you, it'd be a concentration camp. With me, there's only one thing they can do, kick me out of the country. Tomorrow it'll all be over and you'll be okay. Wouldn't do for us to be seen together. I'd better get out of here. Good afternoon, Herr Roberts. We meet again. This time under less favorable circumstances. Herr Roberts, do you happen to have your passport with you? I lost it. So? It was stolen, perhaps? Very careless of you. The last time you were in my office, I warned you that if you insisted on abusing our hospitality, you would have to suffer the consequences. Is it a crime to misplace a passport? No. But it becomes a crime when that passport is first tampered with and then given to a citizen of the Reich so that he may leave the country illegally. What are you driving at? I think you'll understand in a moment. I have arranged to have a friend of yours here. You should be very glad to see him. Bring in Rudolf Hauen. Put him on the chair. As you see, her hound is not looking well today. Perhaps it is because we have just removed him from his coffin. But even in the burlap shroud, you recognize him, of course. I don't know what you're talking about. No? It is exactly this. Rudolf Hauen crossed the Swiss frontier yesterday using a forged passport given him by you. So what? Then you confess? Sure, what about it? Nothing except you disappoint me. I had other pleasantries planned for this little visit. Is this the man? Yes. The night he posed as Dr. von Brickstein, did he have an accomplice? No, he was alone. Fortunately, you have told the truth. In this country, that's worth a medal of honor. Take him away. Lock him up. Hey, wait a minute. I'm an American citizen. You're nevertheless bound by German laws. All right. Hold everything. If you don't mind, I'd like to get in touch with the American Embassy. I'm afraid that won't be necessary. Well, they might get curious when they don't hear me on the radio tonight. Get the managing director of the overseas radio. 
Tell him I wish to see him in connection with William Roberts' broadcast. Hey. Hey, you, wooden ears. Quiet. I want to talk to you a minute. Look, I got 50 marks. You cannot bribe us. It's not a bribe. That radio there, will it pick up shortwave? It will, but we in Germany do not listen to foreign propaganda. Do you think we're stupid? Well, that's beside the point. Goebbels wouldn't object if you tuned in your own brand of news, would he? That is different. Okay. There's a broadcast over the overseas radio in exactly two minutes. You tune it in and you get the 50. Give it to me. A lot of money for a few minutes of radio. It's worth it. That's my broadcast. I want to find out what kind of excuse they'll give when I'm not on the air. Well, perhaps they'll say you're ill. That's okay. All I want is to get my friends looking for me. Sooner or later, the American Embassy will find out where I am. Then they'll spring me. Simple. That's very clever. Do you think the American Embassy will help me? I have a brother in Chicago. Oh, well, I... From the capitals of the world. Come in, Berlin, Germany. Hello, everybody. This is Bill Roberts in Berlin. Today is a day in And what history. the devil? What are they doing? It is a day which will be remembered by Germans, Americans, and British alike. Because one phase of America's war, the war of nerves and politics, is over. For on this day, December 7th, 1941, the Japanese Air Force has struck at Pearl Harbor, wreaked havoc on American airfields and army bases. It is very good, don't you think? Excellent. He is one of the best actors in Germany. He can imitate anybody. You should hear him do the Führer. Deutsche Volksgenossen, Deutsch! Uh, fortunately, he speaks excellent English. Uh, from the time you telephoned me, he listened for seven hours to transcription of a Robert's broadcasts. He sounds more like a Robert than a Robert does himself, don't you think? An American Lord Ho Ho. That's it, exactly. Turn the speaker back on again. I want to hear him. Naturally, this means war between my country and Japan. A war for which we are to blame. That Germany will stand by her ally is plain. As one who recognizes facts, I tell you, fellow Americans, that we are doomed to defeat. And now I see that my time is up. This is Bill Roberts saying good night from Berlin, Germany. Did you notice? The Führer looked a trifle more tired than usual. I wonder... Karen, what is it? You've been like this all evening. I leave tomorrow at midnight to visit my family in Königsberg. These are my last two days in Berlin. It's, uh, it's hardly fair. I demand to know what it is. It's nothing. Perhaps I'm a little tired. Karen. Is it your father? Don't worry. I promise we are not going to try to get him back. That isn't it. And what is it? Carl, I'm a human being. And do you infer that I am not? No. My father was officially wrong. Arresting him was your duty. A young American. A harmless young American, as far as the German Reich is concerned, risked his life to save him. And that wasn't his duty. He did it unselfishly because he thought he owed my father something. What are you driving at? Are you in love with him, Roberts? No, but I'm very much out of love with my conscience. I don't know what you mean. Carl, how do you think I feel knowing he's in a concentration camp? But he's a prisoner of the Reich. He's being well treated. Oh, who are you telling this to? One of Goebbels' typists? Don't forget, I read the reports. Never yet heard of anybody being well treated in a concentration camp. Be careful what you say. Why? What difference does it make? That's what's wrong with you, Carl. You're always the official, never the man. Remember this. As long as he's in a concentration camp for the crime of saving my father's life, I can hardly be the gay companion you wish me to be. You are right, as usual. Of course, uh, I cannot order Robert's release, but perhaps I could make certain arrangements to help him. What do you mean? I could make possible his escape. Carl, would you? 
I am not such a bad sort as you seem to think. And if it would make you happy. But there's one thing I must request in return. Yes? For months I have asked you to set our wedding date. You have always postponed it. I'll set the date, Carl. You are wrong. I will set it. I will arrange for Robert's escape tomorrow night. And you will accompany me in my plane to Königsberg. You will meet my family. Directly afterwards, we will be married. Do you agree? Yes, of course. And so it is. Good night, my dear. Good night, Carl. I can't stand it. I've got to get out of here. Sure, but not now. I've been here more than a year. But I'm not going to stay much longer. I'm going over the fence. 2,000 volts in that wire, chum. They only turn the current on at night. You think they'd get tired of their brutality, wouldn't you? But they don't. That dirty dogs of beasts. Silence! Somebody spoke. Who was it? To speak while working is forbidden. Who spoke? All right. You all will suffer. All right. I'm the one. So you. The English pig has not yet learned the rules. No, and I'll never learn the rules. Not your way. Blind obedience. Without reason, without thought, without soul. to get here. Can't explain. I have only minutes to listen. You're getting out. I am. I've been able to arrange it. But how? It doesn't matter. Just believe me, it's true. A guard's been ordered to let you escape. 200 meters east of the camp, there's a small ravine. A car will be waiting to take you to Switzerland. Now, wait a minute. Let me get my breath. Do you mean to say they're willing to let me get out of here? You have my word for it. So glad for you, Bill. Karen, I don't know when we'll see each other again. But I know it's got to happen sometime. And when it does, it'll be for keeps, you know that, don't you? Of course, darling. Time is up, Pauline. Bill, please always remember that I love you very much. Come, Roberts. Are you sure you understand? You are to inform him that an escape has been arranged. Then, when he's on the wire fence, you are to display your talents. I understand perfectly. Heil Hitler. You, Robert, come out here. Your escape is arranged for tonight. I go on guard at seven o'clock in tower number four. So you're the one who's going to help me? There. Now listen carefully. When you leave the barracks, follow the ditch to the east fence. The current will be off. Keep low, avoid the searchlights, and climb the fence near my station. Is that clear? Is this on a level? Maturish. I have been given orders about you. I'm a man who obeys orders, Roberts. Okay. Good evening, Fräulein Howen. Good evening. I told your landlady I was a friend of yours. 
She let me in. Oh? How is Herr Roberts? What did you say? You were a Neustadt. You've just returned from seeing him. You told him that all arrangements had been made for his escape. How did you know this? <laughs> As Carl's secretary, there is very little in his life that I don't know. Oh, I have no intentions of giving away your little scheme. I could have done that before coming here. Fräulein, you're a fool. You've only agreed to marry Carla because he promised to, to help your American to escape. Suppose I were to tell you that he has no intentions of carrying out his promise. That he has ordered Herr Roberts killed when he tries to escape. No. No, I don't believe you. I'd find out and you would not find out. He would arrange to have you told that the escape was successful. Meanwhile, your American would, would be buried quietly somewhere. I told Bill everything would be all right. Why are you telling me this? Oh, it's not for you. My motives are purely selfish. If I can't get Carl for myself, I want to make sure no one else does. You're wasting your time. Carl is at a party meeting. Now listen to me. There's an official car downstairs. Take it. You may get to the concentration camp in time to warn him. Oh, yes, yes, I'm okay. Wait. Send out the chauffeur to me. I'll make some excuse for your taking the car. Thank you. Fräulein Gerner would like to speak to you. The first door upstairs. Thank you, Fräulein. It's okay, it's all arranged. I wouldn't trust him. Neither would I, but this time it's on the level. Goodbye. Goodbye. God be with you.
dumm Kopf. Fool! There is no excuse. Then search the road again. Where? Extra guards have been placed on every road leading out of Neustadt. The Border Patrol has been informed of the escape. Has uh, Frauen Hahn returned a call yet? Not yet. Then phone her home once more. Yes, Colonel. Yes? Karen, where have you been? At home, of course. Where else? But I called you several times. Strange. The phone did not ring here. We are flying to Königsberg, aren't we, Carl? Yes. Yes, of course, Liebster. Very well, then. I've been waiting for you to pick me up. Will you be much longer? No, darling. I'll come for you at once. So you really intend to do it? What are you talking about? You're going with her. I heard you. How dare you eavesdrop on my conversation? Why shouldn't I? I have a right. Heaven knows I've earned that much. Carl, please don't. You can't go away with her. I won't let you. For the sake of our friendship, I'll forget your impertinence. Carl! Give me General von Starham, please. Colonel von Rau's office. Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, Your Excellency, but it's a matter of the greatest importance. I see. Yes. Very interesting. Not at all. You were quite right to phone. Thank you. Call the Lindenhof Airport. Tell them when Colonel von Rau arrives. He's to be detained until I get there. You look very charming. Karen, I have good news for you. The American has escaped. He is already in Switzerland. to the Lindenhof Airport. Hurry. But I'm due in the Potsdam Station. Do it this day, you fool. And be quick about it. Yes, sir. One A two O O seven O. That's the car, all right. Just a moment, please. What? Would you come with us, sir? What's the meaning of this? I'm sorry, Colonel Van Rao, but our orders are to detain you. Colonel Van Rao? But I'm not Colonel Van Rao. But you cannot deny that this is your car. I have the license number here. How dare you question me, you impregnant clodhopper? What business is it of yours if Colonel Van Rao asks me to drive his fiancée to the airport in his car? I'm sorry, Colonel, believe me. But I have my orders. Perhaps you can identify yourself. I beg your pardon, officer. But this gentleman is not Colonel von Rau. I'm sorry, Fräulein. I do not know you. Consequently, I cannot accept your word. This is preposterous. Look here, you blockheads. Take me to von Rau's plane. I shall be glad to do that. The pilot is a friend of mine. Faster! Hurry! I do not know this officer, but I can assure you he's not Colonel von Rau. Open those gates. These gates are closed by orders of the police. And I order you to open them. Look, there is Colonel von Rau. Yes, that's he. Come on. Get in that plane. Come on, get going. Thank you. Never mind, hurry. Notify 
all control stations to be the lookout from their plane. Yes, sir. Can we find off? Fools! Idiots! Do you know what you have done? You have helped the prisoner to escape. Colonel von Rao, you will consider yourself under arrest. I? Under arrest? But, General... It's useless to deny your guilt. The guard Gunther has already confessed that you paid him 200 marks to let an American prisoner escape. But you do not understand. Then where is this Herr Roberts? There he goes, General. You... you did this to me. Whatever has happened to you, Carl, it's your own doing. So you gave him your plane, too? Colonel, there's nothing more to be said. No, she lies, I tell you. I'm a loyal party member. Perhaps they'll write that on your tombstone. How much farther? Less than 300 kilometers. We'll be in Switzerland in about an hour. Good. your pistol. You mean you want to get out of Germany? Confidentially, it will be a pleasure. 